Holmes has had an encou exciting encounter on foot. We've had a very exciting encounter and I'm afraid it's illustrated a bit of incompetence from on my part. I was walking in front of this little group of ours and I didn't see this elephant until it was too late and Seb spotted it and you can see that he's, he's a young bull. That's why we're standing here and we're not sort of backing off at a great speed. But he's not particularly happy and it's important that sometimes we show you these things. He's not going to charge at us because he's small and he's, he's uh, nervous of us. So his default reaction might be to take a few steps towards us with his head up and then he'd probably turn around and walk away. So I don't think we're in an unsafe position. And he's seen us now, so I don't feel the need to kind of back off. He can disappear into the bush if he wants to, and that's probably what he's going to do. But the point is that we saw him late, and he obviously heard us coming as we were walking along the road. And he was not happy that we had showed him a little bit of disrespect, I suppose, by not seeing him. And I feel, a, I always feel a sense of kind of like I've missed out when I don't see animals like this. It just is a reminder that we need to concentrate. If we come over here, Seb, you'll get a view of him. No, you won't get a view of him. Let's go around this way. I can see his tusks. I think Rex has probably got a view of him there. Now, if this was a giant bull, if this was a sort of six-ton mature bull, we'd have seen him, he'd have lifted his head up like that and we'd have been, we would have been just gone down the road. But because he's a youngster, I'm not worried that he's about to kind of try and do us some damage. Can you see him there? I think Rex has probably got a better view here, yeah. Yeah, we'll get a good view here. Now we're not going to approach him any more closely, but we can move horizontally up and down. He's now relaxing quite nicely. Now I've missed your name, R. Davis or Odd Davis, something like that. You're saying, is this in a zoo or the wild? Oh, Oz, David. Uh, this is not in the slightest in a zoo. This is in the Greater Kruger National Park of South Africa. We're absolutely nowhere near a zoo. That animal is completely wild, and that is why he is reacting like this to us. He's a young bull. He's been tossed out of his herd because he's, well, he's just getting sort of towards maturity. And so what he's doing there, he's feeling a little bit nervous, and having three human beings on foot around him is not particularly comforting to him. He's not terrified. He's not that irritated by us, but he's just going to try and move away now, I think, and sort of make sure that we are not around him. He doesn't like to be having us. He doesn't like having us on foot around him. And the idea behind these walks is not to have an encounter like that. That kind of encounter is okay every now and again, but the best encounter is the one where they don't know you here. Obviously, that reduces any kind of potential conflict that there might be, and obviously that elephant is now a little bit stressed, and that's my fault. Now, Oz David, while we walk along the road, we're going to leave him alone there. He's just clearly showed us that he doesn't want to be with us by moving into the bush and trying to stay away, so we'll respect that and we'll move away from him. <coughs> the Greater Kruger National Park, of course, is part of the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park, which covers the borders of three countries, Zimbabwe, South Africa and Mozambique. And that means that we're in eight and a half million acres, or three and a half million hectares, of unfenced wildlife area. So to describe this as a zoo uh, would be somewhat inaccurate. So we're completely surrounded by the African wilderness here. And an encounter like that is very special. And it's, um, well, it, it's, it, as I keep banging on about, it allows you a certain amount of communication with the wilderness that you don't get unless you're faced with a magnificent beast like that. And I think he was probably about He's probably about three and a half tons or so, so he's he's bigger than a, bigger than a hippopotamus, for example, but he's nowhere near maturity. He's probably around sort of 15 to 18 years old, and a little bit nervous of being on his own. Now let's head across to Taylor. She will tell you a little bit, probably, about the herd structure there, and you can understand why that chap is no longer with the herd.